It's not about the beanstalk. In the Yard, Part 1 Can Jake come out to play? Lily and Ben asked Jake's mother. Sure, she replied. He's in the back yard. Jake was throwing a rope over a tree branch. What are you doing? asked Lily. I want to climb up, said Jake. Maybe there's a giant's house where I'll find a treasure. Oh, said Ben. Like in Jack and the Beanstalk. It wasn't a beanstalk said Jake. "'Twas a bean tree. There is no such thing," said Lily. "'Sure there is. Listen,' said Jake. "'The bean tree. Jack and the Beanstalk from Appalachia. One day, while Jack's mother was sweeping up their cottage, Jack kept getting in her way. She picked up a bean from the floor and said, Jack, go and plant this. So Jack ran outside and planted it under his window. The next morning, he looked out. He couldn't believe his eyes. The bean had grown into a tree so tall, Jack couldn't see its top. I'll climb that tree to see where it goes, he thought. He climbed up up and up until he reached the top. There, he found a strange desert-like land with sand dunes and cactus plants. He saw an old woman walking toward him. Hello, Jack, the woman said. I'm your godmother, she said. It was me who made the bean grow. Did your mother ever tell you about your father? No, replied Jack. But she always gets sad when I ask about him. Your father was a good man, the woman said. He was killed by a giant who had stolen his treasure. Only you can get it back. What do I do? Asked Jack. Keep on walking, she replied, and you'll see the giant's house. Just remember the word water. So Jack walked until he came to a big mansion. It was surrounded by a wall of cactus plants. Stop! What is the password? Asked the biggest cactus as it raised its spiky arms. Suddenly, Jack remembered. Water! He called out. You can pass, the cactus said and led him through. A woman stood by the door. May I stay the night? Asked Jack. You better go back to where you came from, the woman said. 
My husband is a giant, and he eats humans. But I'll hide you just for tonight. And she hid Jack in the oven. That night, the giant came home. Fee, fi, fo, fum. He roared. I smelled the blood of a human. Oh dear," said his wife. "You're mistaken. It's the lamb I cooked you for dinner. It's the lamb I cooked for your dinner. After the giant had eaten, he called. Bring me my hen. His wife placed it on the table. Lay, ordered the giant, and the hen laid an egg of pure gold. That must be my father's treasure. Thought Jack. After the giant had amused himself, he fell asleep by the fireside. Jack crept out of the oven, and picked up the hen. But just as he did, a little dog that Jack hadn't seen before started to bark. The giant stirred. Jack saw a bone on the table, and threw it to the dog. Then, he grabbed the hen. And ran. Soon, he felt the ground shaking. The giant was chasing him. Jack reached the bean tree. He jumped on the trunk, and slid down, down, down. Above him, the giant hollered. As Jack touched the ground. He yelled, "Mom, bring the axe!" His mother came running, and handed him the axe. Chop, chop, chop! Jack hit the tree hard. The tree started to lean. Then it crashed across the fields. Boom! The giant fell to the ground, and died. After it was all quiet, Jack told his mom what happened, and gave her the magic hen. From then on, Jack and his mother never had to worry about a thing, and they lived happily. I wonder what happened to the giant's wife," said Lily. She was nice to Jack. She must have felt lonely when the giant didn't come back," said Jake. But she didn't like that he ate people. I know a story about a boy who took a treasure from a troll. Said Ben. What's a troll? Asked Jake. It's a kind of giant. Ben replied. I'll tell you the story. Olaf, and the troll. Once there was a poor man, who had three sons. When he died, the two older brothers decided to leave their home and look for work. Can I come with you? Asked Olaf, the youngest one. No, said his brothers. Told him. Can I come with you? Asked Olaf, the youngest one. 
No, his brothers told him. You're fit for nothing. You could never get a job. Then the two set off, and found work in the palace kitchen. After a while, Olaf set off too, taking his father's boat, which his brothers had left behind. Olaf also arrived at the palace, and asked if they would hire him. At first, they didn't want Olaf, but when he pleaded, at first, they didn't want Olaf, but when he pleaded, they let him carry the water for the maid. Olaf was quick and friendly, and everybody liked him. His brothers noticed. And grew very jealous of him. Just opposite the palace, across the lake, lived a troll, who had seven silver ducks. Everybody knew that the king wanted them. The brothers told the cook. Our brother Olaf said he could catch those ducks. It wasn't long. Before the king found out, the king sent for Olaf. I've heard that you can get the silver ducks, he told him. Go now and fetch them. Olaf couldn't argue with the king. He asked for a bag of seeds, and said he'd try his best. Olaf loaded the bag into his boat, and rowed across the lake. When he reached the other side, he sprinkled the seeds on the shore. As the ducks came near, Olaf caught them, and put them in his boat. Quickly, he began to row back. When he was halfway there, the troll came out and roared. "Is that you who took my ducks?" "Yes," Olaf called back. "Will you be back?" "Very likely," answered Olaf. Olaf brought the ducks to the king. And the king was very pleased. Well done, he said. After that, Olaf was liked even more than before. His brothers grew more envious. Once again, they went to the cook and said. Our brother told us he could get the golden harp, that is heard when the wind blows across the lake. The cook told others, and soon, the king found out. The king called Olaf and said, "I hear that you can get that golden harp. Bring it to me." Again, Olaf rowed across the lake, but this time, the troll caught him and took him to his cave. Olaf saw the golden harp leaning by the door. The troll called to his daughter, "Put this boy in a cage. Tomorrow." You will roast him, while I invite some friends to the feast. The next day, after the troll left, the daughter lit the fire, and took out a knife. Is that what you're going to cut me with? Asked Olaf. 
Yes, it is, said the daughter. But it isn't sharp, said Olaf. Let me sharpen it for you. You'll find it easier to work with. The daughter opened the cage. Olaf came out, pushed her inside, and locked it. Didn't my daughter roast you? The troll screeched. I guess not, called Olaf. When the troll heard that, he was so angry, he burst. Olaf returned to the palace and gave the king the harp. The king made him his advisor. Olaf forgave his two brothers and grateful, their jealousy changed to admiration. That reminds me of a story about a girl and her sisters, said Lily. She also had to get something from a giant and bring it to a king. What was it? Silver ducks? Asked Ben. No, replied Lily. I'll tell you the story. Molly and the giant. Jack and the beanstalk from Scotland. There was once a man who had many children but couldn't feed them all. One day, he took the three youngest and left them in the woods. The children walked and walked until they came to a house. The youngest one, named Molly, knocked on the door. A woman answered and asked, what do you want? Something to eat, please, answered Molly. Go away, said the woman. My husband is a giant. If he sees you, he'll eat you. But we're so tired, said the other two girls. So the woman let them in and gave them each a piece of bread. They had just taken a bite when the giant came home. Oh, what have we here? The giant asked. Three lost and tired girls, said his wife. I made you a big supper, so leave the girls to me. They will sleep here tonight. Now, the giant had three daughters of his own, and his wife put all six girls into the same bed. The giant went to say good night, pretending to play. He hung gold necklaces around his daughter's necks. Then he put straw ropes around the necks of Molly and her sisters. How strange, thought Molly. When everyone was asleep, Molly crept across the bed and switched the necklaces. Now, she and her sisters wore the gold ones and the giant's daughters wore the straw ropes. In the middle of the night, the giant came into the room and felt the girls' necks. He plucked out the girls with the straw ropes and carried them down to the cellar. 
I'll have them for breakfast, he said to himself. As soon as it was quiet again, Molly woke up her sisters. We must get out of here, she whispered. Right now! The girls slipped out of the house and stumbled through the darkness. At sunrise, they came to a canyon. Far below, a river ran wildly. There was a long strand of hair spanning it like a bridge. We have to cross, said Molly to her sisters. But how can we? they asked. Let me try first, said Molly. She climbed up, balanced herself, and walked. We can do it. The hair is magic. Molly shouted to her sisters. She helped each of them across. On the other side of the canyon stood a big castle that belonged to a king. Molly went in and told the king her story. You're very brave, the king said. The giant stole my father's sword. If you bring it back to me, I'll reward you with a house and all the food you want. I'll try, said Molly. She returned to the giant's house, and at night she sneaked inside. The sword hung by the giant's bed. Slowly, Molly took it off. Clang! The sword fell down. Now, I've got you, the giant roared. Tell me, girl, if I were you, how would you punish me? I would put you in a sack and hang you on the wall, said Molly. Then I'd cut a stick in the woods, come back, and beat you to a jelly. Well, laughed the giant. That's exactly what I'll do to you. He put Molly into a sack and went out to find a stick. Molly started singing. If you could see what I see. What is it? Asked the giant's wife. I can't describe it. Molly said, It's so beautiful. Please let me look, the wife begged. She let Molly out of the bag and climbed in herself. At once, Molly grabbed the sword and ran back to the palace. When the giant returned, his wife told him Molly escaped. He flew into a rage. I'll catch that girl, he screamed. The giant ran after Molly through the woods. He was catching up when they reached the canyon with a magic strand of hair. Molly skipped along over it. But the giant would not dare. Molly arrived at the castle and gave the sword to the king. The king kept his promise. He had a big house built for Molly and her sisters 
and made sure they never went hungry again. He made a big house built for Molly and her sisters and made sure that they never went hungry again. In the Yard Part 2 I'm going to climb the tree now, Jake told Lily and Ben. He jumped up, grabbing the rope. Thump! Jake fell as the rope slipped off. Jake's mom came outside. What happened? she asked. I'm okay, said Jake and got up. I just forgot to tie the rope. Mom? Jake asked. Are there bean trees? Yes, there are, she replied. I know there are chocolate bean trees. Wow! Can we plant one in our yard? Asked Jake. We could grow chocolate bars. Those trees need a different climate, said Jake's mom. And you don't eat those beans. Chocolate is made from their seeds. Mom, said Jake, do you have any chocolate? I'll take a look, she laughed. In a minute, she came back. All I could find are these jelly beans, she said. Thanks, Mom. Jake said, holding them in his hand. Aren't you sharing? Asked Ben. Sure, said Jake. But what if you plant these beans and see what happens? <laughs>